guys, if you've been working in your PDM vault and you've been wanting to know how to use an XML change order, well, today's Q-tip is for you. Stay tuned. Thought I'd put together this quick Q-tip on how these things come together. Now, I will say that this is a pretty involved process. Every XML file will have three components. An XML file, which is the markup file, and that's really nothing more than just the display of the data. Then an XSL, which is your style sheet. And then there's the CSS, which is the cascading style sheet. So there's three components. The XML itself shows this way inside the preview. So it's got a nice layout. We've got a logo. We've got some bold font here, some nice layout of the, the right justified, left justified. And it's, it's all neatly put together. We've got nice separators here. We've got um, lots of uh, different, you know, background here with the gray, and then we've got the white, so these boxes stand out. That takes a lot of the formatting that's in the CSS file. Let's let's first take a look at what the XML looks like. It's got a header, and that's XML version one encoding UTF-8, and then it's got XML style sheet, which is essentially the style sheet that's the underlying layout that makes it look like a web page. The XML itself is really nothing more than open and close tags. This, this tag is the ECO file here that starts here and it ends at the bottom here. And then we have each one, like I said, each one of these are XML that's open, close. And how you tell the open is that there's no slash in the open and then there's a slash in the close. This XSL file itself is again, that's how the formatting gets laid out like a web page. And then this is really nothing more than the data that's going to be displayed in the web page. And some of these have like a percent LT, that's actually a less than symbol. And this is a percent GT, greater than symbol. These are formatted as HTML. This is all very confusing and it's, it can be quite deep. This takes a lot of work to get this laid out just the right way to replace your Word document or, or Excel documents. Next, moving on to this, let's go look at this XSL style sheet. And so, each one of these has a permanent reference to a folder inside PDM. And again, we use these as templates in PDM. The only file the template will need will be the XML and it will drop the, the new file into the folder like this EWR folder. That's in the PDM template. And then these tags are actually mapped inside PDM variables in the data cards. And we can get into that a little bit later. Let's take a look at the XSL file. The XSL is a lot deeper. It also has another reference to a CSS, which is a cascading style sheet. And so this is really the formatting, the underlying formatting of the, how the HTML is going to be displayed. Let me get into just a little bit about what's inside the CSS, and that's going to be these div tags or these IDs. And so this ID, ECO, is inside the CSS file and it has a certain format. It will lay out the XML a certain way inside the XSL. Like I said, this is really deep. Uh, it took us, I would say probably two or three months of some training and then watching several videos provided to us directly from SolidWorks to get, our, to get a real handle on this. But we do this now all the time for our clients. And so this ECO is one, and there's a header that has the ID. This ID comes from the CSS. The header is also from the CSS. And so the header is a type, and then this header itself is an ID, so it can provide you specifically with a layout of the header. And then this div ID is the company. This ID company is really going to lay out the text and the fonts that are included in this header. Again, this class is ECO meta. ECO intro, each of these are inside the CSS file. And we can go take a look at that file here. We can go to open file. And then you'll see that all of these, and this is a very big file, but really this is like, uh, it's very close to Java, but it's it, there's really just a lot, a lot of data in here. So if we went to ECO intro, we would find this header and this is how it's going to lay out the font, the positioning, the top, the right. And then there would be a, that's if we use ECO intro with H1. ECO intro with P, that's a, this is H1 for header, P is for paragraph. And the font size for the paragraph is going to be 18 point, italic, 
1.5 is the line height, and then 10 point is the padding on the bottom. There is just really a lot of information here that can really trip you up if you have uh, mixtures of the data. Anyway, it's quite a deep concept here. Okay, there's one other thing that we do that we develop the attached references tool around, which is the ability to use HTML data inside fields on the data card. So in this data card, we have this field right here, which would be the affected documents. And if you look on the data card, whenever we attach the affected documents, we usually, normally, we will hide this field. In this case, we've got it hidden so that nobody can see it. But the field is actually there. It's just hidden because it doesn't need to be seen. It actually has HTML in it. And the HTML that it has in it is everything that you would see in the XML file under affected docs. It has everything from here out to the end and then back. So it's wrapping like that. But it's got the greater than, less than symbols because we're actually putting a div row and then we're doing a class column, you know, a div class with a column, a div class column. So we're actually laying out the attached documents in columns, column number, column description, and column revision. Again, there is a lot of underlying information here, and it can be extremely frustrating. But if you'll consult with us, we can walk you through this and provide you with these documents so that you can get what you need from it and then do some testing on your own and get the layout just right. Now, the one thing I will say is the mapping of the fields in the data card. Let's quickly take a look at the data card inside the PDM administration tool so that you'll know what I'm talking about. Okay, the data card for this one, this file is an EWR, and so we will be using the EWR data card. It's under D Demo PDM Forms EWRs, and that's where this one is, Demo PDM Forms EWRs. So that's the card that we're looking for right here. In this case, we have numerous fields that we're copying over to the preview. And so if you don't need it in the preview, you don't need to map it. And so that's one of the shortcuts that you can make. In this case, let's take a look at just form number, rev, maybe part number. You'll notice that the tags that are here for each one of these nodes is form number, and then the forward slash is the end. So this is the open tag, and that's the close tag. Rev is open tag, and then the, the forward slash before that is the close tag, part number, part number. Uh, these tags can't have spaces in them, so keep that part in mind. So let's go to the form number, and then the other one is going to be part number, and then rev. The variables on the data card are going to be mapped very similarly to the fields that we map in SOLIDWORKS parts. So if we go to form number, look at the variables. And we'll, you'll notice that we have custom property form number for all these office files. We also have custom property last closed form. That's the attribute name inside SOLIDWORKS files. So this, this is what you see in SOLIDWORKS. This is what you see in PDM. In the same way, XML has the, has the very similar approach. It's, this is for XML file types. The block name, we call it XML. And then the attribute name is going to be ECO file forward slash form number. Now, the reason we do the ECO file slash forward, forward slash form number is because we've got the opening tag and then the sub tag form number. So that's where the ECO file comes into play. If we do ECO file slash form number, form number inside the XML file will get populated. Let's take a look at the one for revision uh, FF. You'll notice that this one in PDM's data card is called revision FF. And then we've got for the XML file type, the XML is a block name, ECO file slash rev. Remember over here, it shows rev. It doesn't show re revision FF. And so that's just like I said before, that's very similar to how we map the variables inside SOLIDWORKS. And so if revision FF on the data card gets a revision letter update, it's immediately updated inside the XML file. And then the last one is going to be, um, we're going to use this part number. The PDM data card is model space number. So let's go take a look at that one. And you'll notice again, we have an XML block, ECO file slash part number. 
again, no spaces. You can't have spaces in these. And then the file type is going to be XML. That's how you do the mappings to make sure that they show up correctly inside the files. Inside the XML file, we have a radio button, inside manufacturing item, outside purchase item. These are a little bit different and they will respond to the radio buttons that you have on your data card, which is fantastic. So let's take a look at how this is mapped. Inside the XML, it shows radio buttons is the tag under ECO file. And then we have radio one. Now this is set to inside main MFG item and then radio one closing tag. If you look at the data card, if you look at the data card over here, it's set for type. And then this is the variable name in the PDM data card. But if you look inside the mappings, it will show type. And then we've got the XML block, which is here. And then we have ECO file slash radio buttons slash radio one. Whatever value is placed inside of there is the value that you will pick up inside the XML file. So in this case, inside manufacturing item is this checkbox or radio button. And then outside purchase item is this radio button. These radio buttons have different variable names. And so the caption is what shows up in the XML file. The underlying variable are both tied to type. So inside manufacturing item is type. Outside purchase item is type. If we looked at again at EWR priority, this is priority is the variable name and this one's high, priority standard, priority low. So each one of these are going to be inside here. The reason why we do radio buttons is because that's also inside here. Inside the XSL, it's there's a test that we have to do to determine what the output's going to look like in the display. Again, the XSL is really like an HTML layout that shows, that grabs the data from the XML because the XML is nothing more than the data. And then it, this XSL lays out the format. And so it changes the format so it looks more like, renders like a web page. And then the CSS is really going to be a lot of the formatting. So in this case, it's doing, it's looking at test, which is going to be the XSL, or excuse me, the XML. Uh, it's going to do a comparison here. And this test is, a, is an X, XML function. And it says, look at this section called radio button slash radio one. If it's inside manufacturing item, make it checked. Name equals checked and then checked. That way it will show up like this, checked. If not, it'll show up as outside purchase item checked. And so this is really, this is almost like an if then type of a scenario. And so, so that you get the display that looks like a nice form with radio buttons, check boxes uh, laid out the way that you want them to be. Again, any changes that you make inside the data card are live. There's no special programming except for the XML, XSL and CSS. This is something that we help our customers set up. And so if you'd like to consult with us, uh, give us a shout and uh, schedule a meeting with us and we can take a look at your requirements and we can let you know how long it would take. This is really an advanced subject. So <laughs> advanced. <laughs> let us know what we can do to help and uh, like to work with you. Looking forward to it. All right. Believe in the queue.